What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's Fish Tanks bringing it to you, talking about the tale of two tanks. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the B26, which is balanced as heck, versus the F35 flu ball tank that my daughter has, which is completely unbalanced and has all kinds of algae. I'm gonna break down both of these tanks, why one's working and looking great, and why the other one is looking terrible. But first, I wanna tell you all something. I wanna tell you, no. I, right now, am saying no to five things that I would really like to do in this fish tank hobby. Right now, I'm sitting on my back porch staring into a camera lens yelling. I would love to be in front of actual people. There are five live fish tank events that I have to say no to. First, the Sacramento Aquarium Society asked me to come out this summer in June to go talk to their club. I've never been on the West Coast. I'd love to go out to the West Coast. I hear the Sacramento area has fantastic both stores, fish rooms, the whole nine yards. Guess what I'm not doing? This summer, I'm not going out to Sacramento. Why? Because I have a vision and I have to complete this vision and get this stupid greenhouse built. I've never built a greenhouse before. Here's the plot plan for this greenhouse that I'm constructing very soon. I'm not leaving town. I'm not taking a break. I'm not getting out of here. I'm getting this thing done. The fourth thing I'm saying no to, my friend Ted, Judy, my man Mark, our friends at Custom Aquariums, they're so kindly to sponsor a 350 gallon aquarium that was supposed to be set up in a new greenhouse in January. That didn't happen. It's been sitting on the floor of my garage and I've been staring at it forever. Do you know what it's like for a 37 year old boy who likes fish tanks to be staring at an empty 370 gallon aquarium on the bottom of his garage? It's killing me. The longer I stare at it, the better it's gonna get. Yeah, Custom Aquarium wants to have me up in Wisconsin. Guess what Wisconsin's like in the summer? It's probably great. I'm in Kentucky right now, it's hot as I'd love to go up to Wisconsin. I'd love to go fishing with Ted Judy. Sitting on a boat on one of the Great Lakes, catching fish, talking fish, doing all that with Ted. I have it a ride doing that. Guess what I'm not doing? I'm not going up to Wisconsin this summer. I'm staying here. I'm getting this greenhouse done. The third thing I'm not doing, I'm friendly with our friends in Predatory Fins. A bunch of YouTubers are going down to Boca Raton, Florida. Guess where I used to live? Boca Raton, Florida. I know it like the back of my hand. I lived there for a year. I probably still have some friends there. Guess where I'm not going this summer? I'm not going down to Boca Raton, Florida for the YouTubers event happened with Predatory Fins. Second event that I'm not gonna go to. There's a new pet shop opening up in Akron. I've been invited to go to that. I hear Joey and his massive biceps are going to be there. I am not going to be there. I would love to be there. I'm from Ohio. I like the temperature of Ohio in the summer. It's great, it feels good, it's cold. I could go drink beers on the back of the boat with my dad but I'm not gonna go. Why am I not gonna go? It's simple, I've got stuff to do here. I'm taking care of business here. And the last thing, the number one thing that I'm missing out on this summer, and it makes me sad to talk about it, but I am missing out on it, and it's for a good reason, and that is this. The past three years, I have been to the Reef of Palooza show in New York. I love New York, I love New Yorkers, I love everything about this show. For two years, I've had freshwater live aquascaping contests in the middle of the Reef of Palooza Meadowlands saltwater show where people are walking by, can't believe in how great freshwater looks. I'd love to be smack dab in the middle of the show. I'm boys with Lou and Vic, and quite frankly, the stuff they're doing at Worldwide Corals gets me excited about Greenhouse 2.0. Unfortunately, that event is this weekend, and I hope you all go and have a damn good time, but I'm not going because the following week, I have my final development plan for the greenhouse. All five of these events can wait. I'm sorry I'm not attending all five of these events. I think it's important. Don't let your mouth overload your back, as the great Jim Rohn said. So I'm saying no to everything. You know what else I'm saying no to? Doing work on these two tanks I'm about to show you. Let's check them out. I want to make another point about saying no to stuff. No one's here right now. However, my family, wife, and two young daughters are home all summer. Money and blood don't mix like two chicks and no d should get up in some, you know the verse, Biggie fans. Yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to shoot a video while my family isn't around. I'm doing this and I'm trying to get that greenhouse built as soon as possible to make it fair for my family to be here without worry about me running in and out, working, half working, not working, Josh coming in, getting a cup of water, us running around. So I just want to make that point. It's family first, that's why I'm not doing it. That's why I'm saying no to a number of things. There's a tank we're gonna talk about second. Let's roll down here, talk about the B26. Dusty got a little rantastic talking about everything I'm saying no about, but it's all about balance for me. Going to all five of those events all over the country will throw me off balance and keep me away from my ultimate goal. 
I want to talk about balance in my life and stuff I'm stopping to get to one of my goals, stuff that I'm postponing until later. Reef Flus will be going on next year. All those events will be happening next year. I want to talk about balance in the aquariums. I got an example of a balanced tank to show you, and I got an example of a tank that is not balanced to show you. We're going to start here with the Fluval B26, the bow front. This is my most balanced and my most favorite tank. I'm going to give you the good first, then I'm going to give you the bad upstairs in Messy Maya's room. Okay, so this tank from head to toe, this is 150 watt Coral Life Metal Halide. This is uh, a little bit of air plant action that I use. And then this tank is decked out. It's got the, uh, what is this, like a Fluval 206 filter, which is the bomb. Everybody knows Fluval makes the best filters around. 150 watt metal halide light on here. Compare that to the F35 tank that I have upstairs, which only has my LEDs. Comparatively, this tank has a ridiculous amount more light on it. That's important because I want to talk about the balance of this tank. You'll notice this tank right here has no algae on the front of the glass, hardly at all. There is a tiny, 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 you know, speck here and there, but for the most part, this tank has almost no algae in it. The cool part about this setup is that this tank, unlike your boy Tusty, is balanced, okay? This tank is balanced. It's been set up for a good long time. It is rolling almost perfectly in my humble opinion. Now, why is it rolling so well? The goal is to get a balanced planet tank. The goal is to get a balanced life. Um, not everything's balanced. I did kill this air plant by having it a little too, uh, too close. To, actually, that's still alive. You can see the green growth. That's actually still alive a little bit, but it definitely was a little too, too close to light. But generally speaking, this tank is my most balanced tank, is my favorite tank. Now, let's unpack this a little bit. Even though we have 150 watt metal halide on here, we have a ridiculous plant load. Uh, people like numbers, even though it's nature, I'm gonna give you some dumb numbers. I like to run my planted aquariums with one inch of fish. For every one inch of fish, I wanna have like a foot of plant matter, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna show you this in my pond in a second. But I don't think I have any fish in here. Uh, the bed of fish that I had in here at one point, I think is no longer with us. I think I lost him. Uh, it is what it is. So there is no fish in this. There are a couple of really wicked snails you can see around here, but the plant load is super duper high. I want to point out, I think because of the lack of nitrogen that the fish would ultimately produce, I am slightly nitrogen deprived up here. I'm not sure if this is a uh, discoloration because of the lack of uh, any fish waste at all or if it's because the water level got too low and I cooked it. The boost took a little bit of a beating there, but you can look just down underneath it and uh, you know see the more, I forget what, uh, what type of boost of philandra that is. It's not a skeleton king, but it's close to it. You can see that stuff is doing just fine. I also love the boost because it has that iridescent look to it, but this tank, I gotta tell you, is extremely balanced. The lights are only on for six hours at a time, maybe seven, that's it. So even though I have a high intensity light on here, they're only on for six hours, you can always go up. I like to run six as my baseline. This plant mass right here is Baby Tears. It's my number two carpeting plant uh, as far as ease of keeping behind Dwarf Sag, both of which we sell a ton of. This actually needs hacked, but this is a really ridiculous uh, high nitrogen absorbing, excess nutrient absorbing plant load right here. You take that in combination with, this is an Apongiton longiplumulosis in the background. It's not an ovaceous, it's a longiplumulosis. It's a little bit darker, uh, a little bit more ruffled than the ovaceous. That's a fast growing, easy plant. I've got the Crenum calamostratum right here. I've got the junk Rippins, that's its name, don't knock it, uh, in here as well as some Java Fern Vendelov. So this tank, hardly any work ever gets done on it. Like I just topped it off the other day uh, with this bucket right here. But for the most part, this tank hardly gets any work for me. Uh, it's very rewarding. The limited amount of time I do spend with this aquarium, I do enjoy. I top it off. I actually took a tissue culture plug of moss and I just shoved it over here like this. This is getting a little scorched, but look at this moss underneath it. This is actually tissue culture flame moss that I just stuck on top of here and it's grown out on its own. So you can see how it's just really taken off. And uh, I'm loving that. I'm gonna have to get it under control, but moss just grows like crazy. I could take this whole patch out if I wanted. But this tank, super duper balanced, 
good water flow. You can see the surface agitation on the top. There's, hard, there's, there's probably not any fish in here, so I am getting a little bit of nutrient deficiency. You can see these really sweet snails. The species variation is, you know, every species of plant is different, but generally speaking, one inch of fish, uh, 12 inches of plants, and you're going to be balanced. This tank is balanced. I'm loving it. I need to top it off. I thought about adding rummy nose to this aquarium um, because the betta fish is gone. Speaking of betta fish, let's roll up to Messy Maya's room where I can show you a tank that's not balanced and the difference between this tank and that tank. Now we are in my daughter Maya's room. Parents, let this be a lesson to you. Whatever you can do to get your children involved in the hobby, do it. One of the things I let Maya do is feed her own fish. I also let her, those of you fathers that participated in the Father's Day sale, um, these are American Girl doll stickers. If she wants to put American Girl doll stickers on an F-35, so be it. This aquarium is clearly off balance. It's not too far off balance, but I want to break down some of the factors that can help you all um, with this aquarium and why we are at this situation with the algae. First things first, algae, generally speaking, is too much light, too much extra nutrients, uh, oftentimes not enough water flow. Where is this aquarium sitting? It's sitting in my daughter Maya's room. This happens to be one of the hottest rooms in our house. It also happens to have a window right here. Window, too much light. I run my own standard double LEDs on here. Now, they're only on for six hours. That's two rows, one reds, one whites. And I've been selling a lot of them recently. But... I run the standard double on here, but I only run it six hours, but there's extra light coming in from the window. There's also extra nutrients, a la Mr. Fish right here. How fantastic is this better fish? This fish is just absolutely fantastic. He's like a waggly dog. I roll up to the tank, he wants fed. Guess what happens every time we look at this tank? We feed this tank. In fact, we overfeed this tank. Overfeeding the tank, too much light, get you this algae right here. I want to make a note on the filtering of this. This is filtered with either a 206, or excuse me, a 106 on here. Um, I love these little filters. Now, this is actually plumbed up through the bottom of these. Uh, this tank, by the way, is a similar footprint to the new Fluval Flora. I love the, uh, the rimless, but I like the way that they uh, got this here. But the, back to the filter, though. The filter, actually, the way this uh, aquarium is sold out of the box, the filter actually the output comes all the way up to the top uh, i wanted to get that lower because of this sick aquascape of my man kevin kelly at the brooklyn hardscapers he's one of the people i'm not going to see this weekend at reef palooza that i really wish i was seeing but uh he did this sick dragon stone design i am selling dragon stone nowadays by the way but he did this sick design i didn't want to have the output of the filter uh, interfering with the scape so i added this little aqua clear on the back here to give me more water flow on the surface so water flow is actually an issue but it's caused by myself not the design of the tank because if i had had this tank at the top i'd have more surface agitation i'd have more water flow right now the output of the filter actually just runs into the hardscape so that's why more than likely we have some of this algae on the front here you'll notice it's here but it's not here because this part of the tank has enough water flow does that make sense so, and this side, and just, just, to, just to hammer this point home, this is underneath one of my pretty awesome lights. This part right here doesn't have algae on the glass. This part does. It's totally a water flow issue. So if you have this kind of filament algae, Andrew, get a shot of this down here. This type of algae, you can see it's not flowing enough. That's the algae from not enough water flow because it's not present there. I want to point something else out that's just pretty cool with this. I took plants from an import, I don't know, a month ago in here. This is fully underwater grown sword. There's the above water leaves that we left on. There's the below water coming up through. So the plant is fully converted. So I just think that's fun to actually see the example of these is above water growth. That's below water growth. So not enough water flow, too much light coming in. And then obviously our friend, Mr. Blue, I think is his name, got fed a little too much. So what are we going to do with this tank? Let's clean it. All right, this is how we're going to clean this bad boy. We're going to do a quick, the quick hit, wham, bam, thank you, man. 50% water change on this sucker. I'm not going to unplug the filter, but I am going to lift this sucker up a little bit, which cuts the flow off. It's part of the reason I love these filters. If I wanted to remove this, I could just flip this up, and that will all pop off. But this uh, actually breaks the, breaks the flow right now, so the filter 
is actually not, uh, this canister filler is actually not running right now. I'm gonna take this light, set it over here, and I'm intentionally not having the filter on because I want stuff to settle. And I'm gonna take the, pi uh, the big tube from the ShamWow spoof to clean this sucker. But we'll wipe this stuff off, and then we'll suck out all the big algae problems. The question is this though, folks, will my daughter even notice that I've cleaned her tank? Will she, will, without being prompted, will she say, oh, thanks, Dad. Now, I did fill this sucker up last night, so I gotta be careful slanging my arms around in here. But the algae comes off fairly easily. So we gotta clean behind the American girls, because that's what she wants to have on her aquarium. It's all about getting kids in the hobby, which is why I'm doing a kids aquascaping contest in Chicago in August, but so we'll get that all shaken, stirred the whole bit. And then we're gonna do a nice 50% water change on it and clean this sucker up. I want people to check this hardscape out. It's pretty legit. I need to get with Kevin and get a video of how he does it with the cement. Check out uh, Brooklyn Hardscapes. Doing a lot of great stuff. And that's all the lower I'm gonna take it because I don't wanna go below the level of the canister filter. I am gonna unplug the other one. And the betta fish can handle a 50% water change. Fill her back up. Hide the women, the children, water change. Don't do water change. When your wife's around. And then I'm actually just gonna fill this whole big tub up with uh, water the same temp as the tank. Let me go test the temp. Hit some dechlor and then scoop it back into this tank. All right, now I got my temp. All right. My wife complained about the water pressure yesterday when Josh and I had, I uh, was filling up the pond and do a water change in the green. She's like, there's hardly enough water pressure to uh, flush the toilet. Sorry, honey, I'm moving out soon. Oh, hey, honey, want to pull your car in the garage? Oh, sorry, you can't because I got this fat Fluval F15 or F20, I think it's F15 right here that I haven't set up, that I'm dying to set up and a place to set up. I've also got this big tank right here, which we'll talk about in a second. I got an empty leaking 40 breeder over here, a 20 over here. Oh, kids, you want to pull your bikes out? No chance in Piss your wife off, piss your life off. I didn't look at the bottom of this container. So I got to get this dirt out of the tub. And make sure there's no more on the floor. Ah, that's a fail. That's gonna piss the old lady off. I am gonna kick the filter back on. Now it's flowing. It was only off for a couple minutes, so I'm not worried about bacteria dying. Because while I refill it, I wanna make sure all the water and all the junk gets stirred up and is put back into that filter right there. Betta fish does not care. Click the links around here. Check out why betta fish are so gangster and have the best personalities. People say I look like a ShamWow dude. You click links around. Check out the ShamWow video as well. Stay tuned for the ShamWow guy. He's coming back. Happy wife. Happy life, get the water off the floor, get the water off the floor, get the water off the floor, you fish tank punks. And there's how we're looking after we cleaned up the F35 in Messy Maya's room. Do me a favor, drop me a comment if you learned a little something or how you stay balanced. Hit the like button, subscribe button, share button, and tank on everybody. Later.